everybody. So tonight we're cooking macaroni and cheese. Now this is a great dish to cook because it is really, really filling. Um, so I learned this recipe at school and it originally had breadcrumbs on the top with a bit of mustard in there, like mustard powder. I took that away because I felt like the breadcrumbs took away from the macaroni and cheese itself. So we just sprinkled cheese on top instead of the breadcrumbs and all that. So that's if, you, if that's a traditional recipe, that's what I've changed in it. So, to start off with, we're going to chuck, I've already put water in here. I'm just going to salt it to stop any starch. And I'm going to start these straight away. So, I'll just put them on here for now while I chop everything up. Um, so, I've heated the oven to 180 degrees. So, as we said in other videos, if you don't have a fan-forced oven, you need to turn that temperature up on the oven by 10 to 20 degrees. So, well that's starting off. We have four shallots here. Um, so we are going to chop these. I might just wash them off first. So I'm gonna quickly rinse these off under the tap. And then I'm going to chop off the top here, which kind of looks like hair. <laughs> so I'm gonna chop all these off. And we're just going to chop these. So just roughly chop all this. And once we chop this, this is going to go in one of the saucepans here. Now I find it easier to cook this in a saucepan rather than a fry pan because it's actually not a lot to cook. And a lot of this stuff actually cooks fairly quickly. So, But if you wanted to use a fry pan, you could do that too. But it's a lot easier in a saucepan. Chop all these. Um, by the way, that macaroni was a 500 gram bag and I used all that. So I just want you to know that there. So I'm just going to chop this straight in here. Got a few red ones trying to roll everywhere, so <laughs> grab them. Now, hopefully, this time I have not forgotten anything and don't need to zip off away to get something. So. We've also prepared a casserole dish here and greased it with butter. So that's all ready to go. So we chuck the bacon in with the shallots because they cook together. I don't know why. That's just how it is. That's how it's done. And obviously we've got a fork here to stir it while it cooks. Um, so for this we actually do need a little bit of oil. So obviously I'm going to move these so I can get these cooked. Now while these are cooking, I'm going to go back over there and I'm going to chop our onion. So we have about, I think we have three of them. So, so about three medium sized or two large onions should do it. So I'm just going to pop a little bit of oil in there just so they can start cooking. So like, um, since I've cooked this before, I just roughly chuck everything together um, because of, of having cooked the dish before. So we just stir that in. There's an even consistency of all that there. So we let that cook away and we're going to come back over here. And this is the hard part. This is where the eyes, eyes start to get getting hurt. So we're going to chop, it, chop these on, ends off. Now, as I said in previous videos, if you just slide down like that, so you break the first layer, or maybe a little bit further, that's an easy way to pull it off fairly quickly. So these need to be um, sort of um, chopped or diced, um, so we need a couple of these. And this will go in the separate uh, saucepan, sorry, over there. Now this is a really good dish because it, it tastes yum, obviously, um, but it is incredibly filling and it's Something that children do like and they would have a problem eating either, so. We just finally top, or sort of pop these up roughly. So that's one done. We just chuck it into the saucepan we've got over here. So I'm just going to move this over here so you can see this better. And I'm just going to chuck that in there. Now this will be cooked in butter. And after it starts to cook a bit, that's when we'll put a bit of flour in there to make a sort of a roux. Um, so, and then we will add in the milk to that. 
and then we will add in the shallots and bacon from that saucepan and then of course the cheese. Oh my god, my eyes are hurting now. So I'm just going to put the top back over here to stir this because it started cooking right now, I can hear it. Now this might take on the cook. I can smell all that bacon. <laughs> this is actually not a very particularly long dish. Once you cook it, it's just got to sit in the oven for a little bit so that it melts the cheese on top. Or if you choose to use breadcrumbs, it cooks them off. So. Now, as we always say, just be careful when slicing things because we don't want to slice any fingers or anything like that. So just be very careful. If something's a bit slippery, just be very gentle. And if you are, you're chopping onions, be careful because I'm pretty sure they try to blind you. So, i going to quickly chop all this up and then it's going to be popped in with this. Oh, no, there's a spring onion there. We'll get that out. I think the reason why that they cook the onions separately is because things cook at different pace. Like, so like the onion might cook off quicker than these actually do, or they might cook quicker than the onion. But everything needs to be cooked, so I think that's probably the reason why. Yeah, so we'll just look that like that. And then sometimes you'll get a, a good onion that'll sort of pull all the way off, or sort of halfway off. So that's an easier way to peel onions rather than, I don't know, grabbing a peel or however, however you do it. chop everything. I mean, you don't really need to be pre precise and cutting things because it's going to get eaten and someone's just going to stop it down anyway, so it's not a real big deal. So you just cut it how, like, how fine you want it. It just has to be chopped. They'll also soften when they cook anyway, so. So that's the onion done. I'm going to pop back over here now and check how leaves are going. So they are nearly ready. So they're nearly ready to go, I think. So what we're going to do is we're going to come back over here. Now these have to be cooked in, cooked in butter. Um, this is what helps create the roux. Well, that's usually how you do it. Um, so I'm going to add in about, um, for this amount of onion, probably about four tablespoons of butter. Oh, my eyes are feeling those onions now. amount of flour when that's cooked. Um, so we're going to come over here now and we're going to start this up on the other jet over here. So we're actually going to move them on the small one because that's actually ahead of this and we're going to start there cooking. So those won't actually be very much longer. They're starting to brown off, like the bacon's starting to brown off and everything like that. So they'll only need a couple more minutes. We're going to grab our fork and we're going to stir our macaroni shells because when cooking pasta it absorbs a lot of water very quickly. Plus, we don't want anything to stick either. I did forget to get something out. I forgot to get a colander out, but we'll come back to that later. <laughs> I swear I always forget something, but oh well. We'll just pop and get it later when we need it. It's a small kitchen anyway, so we don't want too much everywhere. Like, on the floor, there's like four floor tiles in between both benches here. So, it's a small kitchen. So they actually look like they're starting to soften up. So I don't reckon that we can longer. Um, also, I forgot to say that we're actually having a side of chips with this too. So these are done now. So we're just going to turn that off. I think that's right. Yeah, that's the right one. So there's a little bit of oil in there, but that's not particular. That doesn't really particularly matter. So if you can melt this butter. So this might take a little bit to do, so how about we come back when we're ready for the next step. We'll see you shortly. Okay, so it's been a couple of minutes later. Um, so it actually didn't take long to melt. Um, See, so it's all melted now. Now what we do is, here, I'll cut it right here. I'm looking for it and it's right bloody next to me. Um, so what we need to do now is add in roughly the same amount of butter we added in. So we want it to form a roux. So I'm just going to put like a few tablespoons in there. So that's two and a half, three, and that'll make four because one of them was a half a spoon, a tablespoon. 
So let's go mix this in, and it should create a root, which is like, I'll, you'll see what it is. So the flour sort of created that sort of consistency. Now this will help the milk thicken up. So we turn this heat off for a few minutes, because we actually need to add in the milk now. So we'll just see how much milk we need for how much flour is in there. Um, let's have a cup of milk. And we had a cup here. Um, it's a... After we add the milk in, that's when we add our um, bacon and our shallots in, or spring onions, whatever you want to call them. This same thing, just two different names for it. So we'll see how two cups goes. If that's enough, and if it's not, we'll just add a, another one in or something like that. So we're just gonna just gonna mix that in quickly. So what the butter, the flour will do, it will add, it will actually thicken up as it gets hotter. So we're gonna add more more than that in. So this is ba basically the, the the foundation of the macaroni mixture is what we're making here with the shallots and the onion and all that sort of stuff. So I might add two and a half in. Let's see, see how that is. We'll just see if we need a little bit more after I add these in here, but I think it'll be right. Now, I'm just going to scoop that in. I totally don't want the oil, I don't want the oil in there, so I'm going to grab this spoon with some holes in it. Spoon with the holes again. <laughs> I use it often. So we're going to try and drain that out. Um, so we're just going to drain that a bit. Um, of course, there's going to be a little bit of oil in there that comes out of the food itself. We don't want too much oil in there. It's not very good for you. So it's like a tap running. That's a lot of oil. So I'm just going to grab all that out. See, I've, I, when I tilt it, it sort of runs downhill, so there's not as much oil in it as there usually is when it's flat. Just gonna grab all that out. Or most of it. We don't want the stuff in the oil down there. Okay, so that's there's still a bit in there, but that's fine. So we're just gonna mix this in and we're gonna see if we actually need more. Okay. Now we won't I might add a little bit more in because it actually is gonna thicken. So I'm just gonna put a splash in there. Maybe two. Okay. Now we're gonna start um, this up very shortly. We need a fork. I need to grab one of these macaroni, if possible, because I don't think they're going to play an easy game. I'm just going to stir them first. Now, I want to check them off camera, they need another five minutes, so they'll be pretty close, if not already there. Come here, you. So, obviously, you just taste this to see if it's soft. So, they're actually done. They're, not, they're cooked enough, because they actually don't, do have to go in the oven still. So, it's going to come here. An empty set there. So we're just gonna what I do is I just strain it in there. And some of it doesn't come out. Um so I'm just gonna put that in there. If it's a just strain that it'll work. And I'm gonna grab that fork I had. I'm gonna spin all this in here. So we might actually not need all this, but it's better to have too much than not enough. But like all pastas, it's probably the first thing to go in the meal, so we usually just add it all in after everyone's had some. So, oh, that's hot. Okay, so I just put this over here. And what I usually do is just pick up whatever I've strained out and I'll put it on the saucepan. Voila. So, <laughs> that catches all the water. So the water's not going to go everywhere. Okay, so I'm just going to mix in the extra milk I added in. So this is our macaroni like mixture here, without the shells of course. I'm going to move that out of the way. Put it on the handle burning. So I'm just going to start this up, and we need to start this cooking, and it will actually start to boil, and as it starts to heat up, and it starts to boil, it will actually thicken a lot. And when it's thickened, the last thing we do is we season with salt and pepper, and we also chuck some cheese in there. Now, we've got a bowl of cheese over here, and we want to save some of that for, our, for the top of the macaroni, so we're not going to use all that. So, we don't want to sit here forever watching this go round. So, we'll be back as soon as that starts to thicken or boil. So, we'll see you shortly. Okay, everybody, our mixture has thickened. As you can see, that's thickened a fair bit from what we started with. Now, don't worry if you don't think it's too thick because, as I said, we've still got to add cheese. And we also have to add the shells in, and that'll thicken them up a lot. So, we're going to put a bit of salt and pepper in there, so I'm going to just chuck some pepper in there, you know, 
mix that in and do the same with the salt and you can take this off the heat for a few seconds because it's spoiling away there um, and we're going to grab our cheese we're going to add probably not that much so we've still got some in there for the top we're going to mix this in and we're going to put it back on the heat to melt it in. So we're just going to mix that in for a little bit till the cheese starts to melt. Which won't take very long at all. And then we chuck in our macaroni. So we're chucking our macaroni after that. So the dish is like three quarters of the way done now. Okay, so we've seasoned and the cheese has melted in. I just grab a pinch more cheese and drop that in there. Just gonna mix that in and when this melts I'm gonna turn the heat off and then I'm um, sort of like fight with the macaroni to mix it in because all these sort of pastas sometimes takes a bit of elbow to mix them in. So the cheese is melted enough. So everything's melted in there. I'm just going to turn that off. Give it a stir. Now, the fun part. Okay, so let's come grab a spoon. It wants to come out. Um, so we're just going to spoon it in little by little because it's actually, if you put too much in, it's going to be a bit of a problem. Okay. Just going to mix that in. I don't do macaroni gets dirty because it's going in there anyway. So it's going to drop a bit at a time in, so it doesn't oh, it doesn't make your arm too tired stirring like it in like as it does with big chunks. So it's going to mix that in. Oops, I dropped some on the stove. Um, so we just let mix some in. Um, we might not use all of that. We'll just have to wait and see. Um, so just mix that in. Oh, it's hot. So we need a bit more than that. So I probably put a bit too much in, but that's alright. We can use this later on. And add it in as the macaroni disappears. Because the shells are always the first to go. So we're just going to mix that in. Holy dooly, it's hot. I don't know what that looks like to you, but that looks pretty damn tasty to me. <laughs> so I might just add a little bit more, because there's places that doesn't really have macaroni in it. Like, very much of it. So let's pick some up. kind of don't want to touch it, because it's going to be hot. So just going to mix that in. So this didn't actually take too long to cook. And... You can sit down with a glass of beer, wine, spirits, whatever the hell you drink, or if you don't drink, a cup of tea or whatever. Well, it sits in the oven for, sometimes it, it can take between 10 and 20 minutes depending on how hot the oven is. So we've got our set on 180 degrees Celsius. So I reckon that should be enough. So there's still some left over, but if there's anything left over um, tonight, we will add them in because... They're the first thing to go, so I'm just going to come over here. Ooh. Hot. And anyway, this is our casserole dish we prepared, so I hope that's going to fit in there. <laughs> so we're going to put that all in there. We're going to put the spoon. Wait, I'll put it over here. I got it. Um, it's gonna... See, that saucepan is pretty full. So I'm just going to see if that fits in there. So let's put it all in there. Skip it in there. Ugh. Just made it, I think. We might just make it in here. Yeah. So, I'm just gonna spread it out so I can get the rest of this in. Now, this is super delicious, like so good. Um, it already looks really tasty. It's already really tempting to eat. So, that gives us enough room to put some cheese on top. Now, obviously, it won't take too long for the cheese to melt because this is already hot. I'm just gonna grab the spoon with the bottom on it. Um, so it won't take all too long for the cheese to melt because the oven is pretty bloody hot. And this itself is very hot. So I didn't use too much cheese. Because <laughs> I actually grated this with the cheese grater because I forgot to buy grated cheese. So I used 
just a normal block of cheese, but that should this should be enough. There's nothing layer will do. Okay, so I'm just gonna put that in the oven, and I don't think this will take very long. If you like overload it with cheese, it would. But there's only a thin layer on there because we've also got plenty in there too. Because usually it's put in with breadcrumbs. So we're gonna pop that in the oven, and when this is in the oven, we're gonna cook our chips. Um, everyone knows how to cook chips, so you don't need a tutorial on that. So we're just gonna pop this in. Oof, that's hot. Now I reckon that looks pretty damn tasty. <laughs> so let's gonna go on the oven. And that should take about 10 minutes because it's not much cheese on there. Maybe 15. So we'll see you then. And I'll be ready to plate up then. So see you shortly. melted around over because I think there was just not enough room in there. Um, so I'm just going to shut this off quickly. Um, so it's going to dish up now. So I'm going to bring the plate over. I'm just going to I actually thought I didn't need this anymore so I went ahead and washed it but then I found out that I did need it. So I'm just going to scoop some of that out. need some this thing. So we're going to pull that out and we're going to dish that up like that. Now, I'm only going to give everyone one, maybe one and a half spoons. A little bit more than that. But not much more because, as I said, this is very, very filling. So that should be more than enough. So there's one. I'm just going to put all these up. So I'm just going to grab another spoon. Now this just goes on depending how much your family is, but this is pretty filling, so they can always come back for seconds if they if they want. So that's number two done. So this, I'll grab two places time and drop a chip on the bench. So, so depending on how many people you have, you know, that depends on the, the size of the meal that you make. Like you just add more if you've got more people to feed. So you can sort of double it if you're feeding double the amount of people. So that's that one's that one done. So that looks very yummy. <laughs> looks delicious. Now I still have some left over here, so I'm gonna put the back there over there. So that's another that's four place done and there's still I don't know. Three scoops. Or about three scoops left. I mean that won't last like other meals do, like spaghetti and life for two days because I doubt it. I doubt it'll survive that long for one. So it's something. It's enjoyable. It's a very enjoyable dish. Yeah, I'm just gonna like. I don't even do this chip. I dropped it. I'm gonna put it back there. It was on the other bench, and the bench is clean. So there we have four macaroni and cheese meals with a side of chips. So if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll see you later for more videos. Bye.